Okay, today we're aiming to do something like this, a big blood splash. Okay, so we can start up by deleting the cube. Then we can press Shift A, go to Mesh, then Circle. And when we have the circle, we can press Tab, and then E, S. Texture the vertices in like this. Then we want to uh, select all, and we can rotate it around X. Like this, and we can rotate it uh, 90 degrees. Like that. Uh, and just to see that it's, I want the blood to go this way. So we want the faces to go this way. We want them to be blue. So to check this, we can just uh, go turn on face orientation and it's uh, going the right way. Great. So right now I want to shape this like some kind of wound. So I want to scale it upwards like that. And then we can take this one and I want it to go in a little bit and we can scale it also upwards like this. And I think it's too round so we can maybe also scale it in X and just shape it like a wound. Uh, yeah, maybe from uh, a cut from a knife or something like that. Uh, but right now it's too perfect so I just want to reshape it a little bit. So it's... Uh, not too symmetrical. Uh, we don't want that. So just we make it a little jagged. Okay, so that should be enough. And then we can go to the object and then we can select quick effects and we choose uh, quick liquid. Great. Right? So get a shape like that and we can select our wound again. We can press N and you see so the scale is correct. Now we can take this one, press tab, and we want to splatter to go this way. So we G and Y over there. This is the thing that's going to produce the blood. So this is the flow flow so source, and this is the domain. So now we need to start fixing the values uh, so this will look like a blood splash. Okay, so first off, we want the uh, we want this cut to have a initial velocity. So we want the blood going this way. So we check this and we want the blood to go in Y, in the Y direction. So we can put this to 10 and it will be a good speed. And uh, maybe I want it to go a little bit this way as well. So we can uh, hit it with one and then we can, uh, then we can go to the flow source and we can change this value to three because I think that looks better. And already now something is happening. Uh, but now we need to, we done with the values for the flow source and now we need to work with the domain. And right now we have the resolution to 32 and you can see how big the, it's not called pixels, but you understand the resolution will be and it's this size right now i recommend that you go with a minimum of 64 but so the higher this number is the more heavy it will be for your computer and uh, i think the end result maybe you want this number to be uh, around 200 maybe 256 but we will talk about that later and uh, the blood will go this way and Right now it will probably hit the wall from this um, domain, but we don't want any border collisions. So we can just uncheck all of them by dragging and uh, left click and dragging down. We can leave this for now. This is just a quick blood tutorial. And uh, I think we can um, turn down the mesh and I will talk about them later, but we want to have a place where we can cache our animation. So let's just save it in your uh, blood folder uh, great and then uh, i want my animation to go from one and i think 25 will be enough the longer you make this the longer the animation will be and so on so we can put this to 30 like that great and then we want to the type i recommend that you go with modular and now the box is back uh, great and right now if you start press space to start animation you can see it working on it nothing happened 
and the reason uh, because of this is that you need to bake it so you go up and when you choose modular you can first bake um, the particles in animation and look like this we press bake data and it goes down here it and right now the animation is just all these particles has gone down to the ground and the reason for this is gravity and we don't want any gravity right now so we can go to field weights and we can set the gravity to zero and we go up again and we can free the data and we can bake the data again so right now we have the animation and I don't think it looks really good and uh, now it's time to work with the cut until you, you get this the particle to look like you want them to so I think my cut cuts problem is that it's too wide so I want to scale it again in X and maybe I want to take this part and bring it back a little bit like that and maybe I can add a loop cut sometimes it helps so right now nothing has happened because it's still baked so this animation this particle animation is saved in a way so we need to set it free again so select the domain free the data and bake the data great so we look now this looks better great and maybe I can free the data and I go with an even high resolution because the particle will change then so let's set it to 128 and bake the data okay great so I think this actually is starting to look good I can live with that but if I uh, render it now first we can set the view so I'm looking at this area and then I press ctrl alt zero to set the camera and uh, yeah I think this would be good so let's press f12 to render and right now you don't see anything and the reason because of this is that uh, I have not set up the scene and and this is not in a mesh that you can see yet so we need to bake bake the mesh as well but as we can see now this is a non resumable catch so we need to activate that first so we need to free the data check this is resumable and then bake the data right and then we have the mesh and I want to bake the mesh as well so we check that and we wait okay so right now something is happening is a big chunky blob if you render this okay so we have something and the um, scene is not good at all so I want to fix that so it's time to set up the scene we can go to the world purposes and I want to uh, add uh, uh, in environment texture and I want to go with my uh, brown photo studio and you can find the brown photo studio free at polyhaven and I will link to this in the description below and I actually want to render this with the uh, cycles so you set it up and the max samples I can set this to 150 and if you try to render this now yeah it's starting to look like something but it's still uh, a big big blob I want to fix this as well and the way to solve the blobness or how thick this is going to be is um, in one part depending of the resolution if you go with the higher resolution it will look better but another important thing is the, um, the mesh and the upress factor and the particle radius so I have done a bit of testing so you can get an understanding for how it works so this is the up, uh, res factor set to 1 and the particle size 1.5 and this is a blobby it doesn't look too good but if we set up res factor to 2 it looks like this and then if you take the up res factor and the particle size to 2 it looks like this and then up res factor to 3 and uh, particle size to 1 and as you can see 
my values up here. And this is the one I like the most, is the uppers factor 4 and a particular size to 2. And here you can see all of the variants again. So I want to change this so we can actually just free the mesh. And then we change the up uh, res factor to 4. And then we bake the mesh. And a trick that you can do if you don't want animation, you can just first render out the particles. And then you can see how it looks. And then you can just render out the, or baking the mesh only for the frame that you want. Okay, so like that, and let's render it. Yeah, it's starting to look good, but the material looks all wrong. So let's create a quick blood material. So let's go to the shading tab. We can actually delete this one, and we can delete this one. And let's press Shift A, and I want to add a principal BSDF. We can put it here and we drag it into the surface like that. Great. And then we want a red color here, kind of dark. And the value I work with is the 830D00. And this is a kind of dark value. And we want the roughness to be set to zero. Then I want to change the transmission to have a value of 0.9 like that. And I also want to add a volume scatter like this and um, because I think this way is working best for me and the color I work with here is the E7473B and we drag this one to volume and we want to set the density the density is almost like how opaque uh, it, it will work like how opaque the blood is going to be so let's set this to 20 I think it's working fine Great, and if we now render the scene, and right now it's kind of hard as well. Another thing you can make to look it even better is to work with lighting, and then we can also uh, we can also go to the modifiers properties and add a smooth, and it will look a little bit better. So if we go back to layout. Uh, and then you just press render the scene and we have a bloody scene in the kitchen. Great. And the last thing I want to do is just to, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So now I just want to free the data and set this to uh, 256, bake the data. So now it's going to take even longer time. And right now we can only see the particles in the viewport shading uh, wireframe mode. And to change this, we need to go to the object properties. Then we go down to viewport display and display as a wire. And now we can see it drift again. And as you can see, it has changed a little bit. Whoops, but I think it looks okay. This is a lot of trial and error. Great. And as I talked of before, I really like, I like how it looks, uh, but I don't want animation. I only want the image of this. So we can go to, uh, so we can go to the physics properties and then I can set the frame start at 24 because now it's only making a mesh of uh, the frame 24 and 25. So let's bake the mesh. And this we say was a lot of time. And what's important is that this is kind of heavy on the computer. So remember to save so you don't lose all of your work. Okay, great. So the mesh is uh, done. So now we can just render it. F12. Okay, great. So this is a bit of a nasty wound, but yeah. This is how you can do a blood splash and blood splatter. You just let this blood hit a wall over here and you will have your splatter on the wall. Uh, okay, great. Thanks for watching. And if you like stuff like this, please like and subscribe.